Right, so very good evening to all of you ladies and gentlemen and thank you very much for making time to join us this evening for the media launch of cimg's ghana regional brand index now somewhere last year during the customer service the customer satisfaction index launch the chartered institute of markets in ghana told all of us they had other projects one of those projects was the regional brand index and today we're here to officially launch it we're live on the joy news channel my name is Winston Amwa, and I'll be in charge of this ceremony. We'll begin with an opening prayer to be said by the Executive Director of the Advertisers Association, Ghana, Francis Darcy. Good evening. Shall we please, with the greatest of respect, rise so that we can say this? Thank you. Thank you very much. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your grace and mercies that is bestowed upon us every day. We do not take these for granted. We thank you for tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity to launch this research and move our industry and our country forward. We pray for those who are yet to join us wherever they are, Father, quickening their steps to come and join us in this historic occasion. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. I couldn't hear the amen. Amen. Great. All right. So having said the opening prayer, let's now get into the discussions for this evening. And we would have the welcome address by the National President of the Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana, Dr. Daniel Kasati. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you, Winston. The chairman for the night, Dr. Winfred Nelson, acting director for development coordination at the NDPC. The director of monitoring and evaluation, public enterprises office of the vice president of the Republic of Ghana, Professor Kweku Apiedu. Ambassador Hana Amanyaku, coordinating director of political and economic, representing the minister for foreign affairs and regional integration. Mr. Dele Kamavo, Director General Administration, representing the Minister for Local, Gov Local Government and Rural Development. Dr. Geoffrey Tamaklo, Director in Charge of Tourism, representing the Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture. Patrons and fellows of CIMG, members of the Technical Committee of the RBI 2022, our three media partners, the Multimedia Group, Business and Financial Times, and the Guard, Corporate Guardian Magazine, representatives from the technical and traditional universities who played key roles in administering the research questionnaire, members of CIMG, media men and women, the teaming virtual attendees and followers on social media. Good evening to you all. It is with great pleasure and excitement 
that I extend to you warm, a warm welcome to the launch of the much-awaited regional brand index. As you may recall, the CIMG last year embarked on a journey to unearth and highlight the economic and tourism potentials of each of the 16 regional brands of Ghana. The aim was, among other things, to complement and reinvigorate government's original brand Ghana agenda and to contribute to giving meaning to, the, to Ghana's year of return as well as the beyond the year, uh, beyond the return programs a homecoming package that aims at attracting Africans in the diaspora and to keep patronizing Ghana as a home and the ultimate tourism and investment destination. In doing this, Mr. Chairman, the CIMG aims to creating mass awareness about the existence of the 16 regional brands and later the 261 Metropolitan Municipal and District Assembly brands, all classified as sub-brands with distinct and unique potentials for attracting patronage to boost their local economies. The key pillars for the study, which formed the criteria for the assessment, were carefully selected after rigorous research and consultations with identified stakeholders. These are measures that are of value to local and international visitors, be they tourists or business travelers. A good knowledge of how the system regions are ranked against these parameters is a great marketing asset, as they serve as the needed catalyst for development at the regional or local levels. These are, of course, good pointers to investors seeking opportunities in the various regions of Ghana. Today, therefore, marks a significant milestone as we put forward findings of the research. Mr. Chairman, a regional brand is the sum total of all the perceptions of a region in the minds and hearts of its publics. These perceptions include the people, places, culture, language, history, food, fashion, famous personalities within these localities, etc. This project, the Ghana Regional Brand Index, took much inspiration from the original work of a gentleman known as Simon Arnold, who in 2005 developed the concept of the Nation Brand Index. He is indeed recognized as one of the world's leading authorities in the branding of countries, regions, and cities. In his maiden report, Mr. Chairman, Simon makes the point, and I quote, when we express a preference for French holidays, German cars, Italian opera, when we instinctively trust the policies of a Swedish government, comment on the ambitions of a Japanese, of the Japanese, the bluntness of, Ameri of the Americans, or the courtesies of the British, when we avoid investing in, guess what, Russia, or admire the heritage of China and India, we are indeed responding to brand images in exactly the same way as we shop for food and clothing." Unquote. Mr. Chairman, if you just oppose this with our study, it is only reasonable to notice that our original brands should, be position, should position themselves to compete with each other for the attention, respect, and trust of investors, tourists, consumers, NGOs, CSOs, and other developmental agencies, foreign embassies, the media, and even central government. A good regional brand must have a positive image in the minds and hearts of the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. This is because having a powerful and positive regional brand image provides a crucial competitive advantage. It is, it is essential for our regions to understand how they are seen by their publics, how their achievements and failures, their assets and their liabilities, their people, their food, and what they produce locally in their regions are reflected in the overall brand image. Mr. Chairman, from the findings of our study, 
Almost every region has its brand strengths and weaknesses. So you may see different winners for each of the parameters before the overall winner emerges. Take the Upper East Regional Brand, for example, and that is my, uh, my mother region. The brand scores 85% on weighted scores for people. A further drill down, however, reveals that there are two out of the eight areas of people. That is, the people are hospitable and the people are kind, where the region scores 90%. These two are the areas of strength and emphasis and attention. These two are the areas of strength for emphasis and attention by the people of that region and the managers of the Upper East Regional Brand. This is how we expect the content of the report to be consumed. Beyond, you know, uh, who comes first and which region is last. We expect our regional brands to be able to maintain a healthy balance between basic reassurance vibrancy, adventure, youthful spirits, and uh, excitement. For the new regions, it is understandable in branding to see some of them struggling. Being newly created, their problems may be partly because so few people have any direct experience of those regions, their people, products, and so spend very little time or attention to them. This is typically the case of a blank canvas in branding, a region about which most people have very few opinions. Going forward, Mr. Chairman, these regions need to consciously and deliberately put forward what they have to offer. They must identify their areas of strength and make it attractive for people to patronize them. To gain a better reputation, a regional brand must, must overtly and covertly communicate its, to its audience how good the region is. This is how to build a strong and resilient regional brand. Let me end by wishing each of the city regional brands the very best of luck. Being a marketing institute, our work starts right from here. We owe it as a responsibility to play the hands-holding role of giving the necessary guidance to each of our beloved regional brands as part of the brand strategy to building a formidable nation brand for Ghana. Mr. Chairman, permit me to express my deepest gratitude to the dedicated team of experts who have painstakingly worked on this report. Their expertise and commitment to delivering accurate and insightful information is evident in the pages of the report as you read it. And I am confident that it will serve as a valuable resource to policymakers, businesses, tourists, travelers, and the like. It is worth mentioning, Mr. Chairman, that after a successful initial stakeholder engagement with the various ministries and agencies directly involved, we, the CIMG, are preparing to continue, continue the engagements in a second round of presentations to other government institutions and private sector organizations. Lastly, Mr. Chairman, I would like to express my gratitude to all of you, our distinguished guests, for joining us today to celebrate this occasion. Your presence is testament to the importance you attach to promoting our regional brands, and your unwavering support for this project is highly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Daniel Kasati. And I find it exciting that the Chartered Institute of Marketing in Ghana has embarked on this project. It's been one of the things that we've talked about for some time now. In fact, when we embarked on this whole decentralization, our expectation was that you know, it would lead to some bit of competition amongst districts. And so if I know that uh, public service delivery is better in one district, I would also improve uh, that in my district. I like the bit about not who's been first or who's second or who's last. But let's begin to look at the details of the reports. Let's look at what each region represents. The most important thing is not which region comes first, but the investment potentials or economic potentials or tourism potentials of every region. Once again, thank you very much for putting together this report. Now, our chairman for today's occasion is a development and climate change expert with practical experience in project management. 
Now, he has worked for the National Development Planning Commission in Ghana for the last 30 years, since 1993. He holds a PhD in Development Studies from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, Ghana, MPhil in Environmental Studies from the University of uh, Strathclyde, Glasgow, UK, and a first degree in Social Sciences, Economics, and Geography from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi. He has a wealth of experience in development planning, environment and climate change policy analysis, project management, facilitation, and strategic thinking. He demonstrates leadership qualities and is enthusiastic, not only about learning, but also about strengthening the capacity of staff through mentoring and coaching. Our chairman is the Director, Development Coordination Division of the National Development Planning Commission, Dr. Winfred Nelson. Let's welcome him with a round of applause as he gives us his opening remarks. Thank you very much, um, and good evening to you all. Um, I'm happy to be here, and my Director General, Dr. Kojo Mensa Abrampa, sends his warmest greetings to you all. I'm, I'm replacing him. When evidence is used as an accurate reflection of the needs of people, the proposals for change are likely to produce effective outcomes. Ladies and gentlemen, the initiative by the Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana, I think, needs to be applauded. Let's give them a big clap. By virtue of its functions, in line with Articles 86, 87 of the 1992 Constitution, the National Development Planning Commission works with all stakeholders from government, private sector, professional bodies, and so on. Now, by doing this, we produce key national documents, such as the medium-term development policy framework, medium-term development plans, long-term development policy frameworks, and so on. But the fundamental of, of these products is sound data and information. We from the National Development Planning Commission are happy to be working closely with the CIMG. And the reason is when we produce these documents, we have what we call communication strategy to almost all the documents we produce. We try to do our best, but I think this is an opportune time now to work with the professionals to help us in packaging the information, to tell the stories behind the figures, to the large Ghanaian populace. Also, I would like to state that by virtue of our functions, we work very, very closely with all the regional coordinating councils. We are the apex of the planning system in Ghana, all the 261 MMDs, and all the ministries, departments, and agencies. So, it is very, very important for us regarding the regional branding and so on, because this will help us in our work and it will also help with decision making. NDPC also is required to do research. Articles 480, Section 2B, we are expected to carry out research in broad development planning related not only to economics and other things, but also including tourism. And that is why you find issues related to tourism um, in the broad national development policy frameworks. Like the work of an artist, at the outset, you may not understand what is going on. It may look like a bed, it may look like a forest, but at the end of it, the critical thing is that it turns out to be beautiful. And at this time, we are happy to say thank you very much, CIMG, for what we are doing. The starting, we may not see it, but I can assure you that at the end of it, it's going to be beautiful because we are going to take the data, the information coming up, and use it 
in our national development planning efforts. I would encourage all of us, and NDPC, uh, from my Director General, we are all embracing and we are ready to partner with you in whatever you are doing, and also work closely with the Ghana Statistical Services in these data and research activities and all. Um, we thank you very much for this initiative, and we'll continue with the collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Winfred Nelson. And of course, you made the important point about research. Data, very, very important for national development and planning. And so if you don't have data, you certainly would be lagging me. And it's a, it's a reason I say this is a very important report. Because today, we have this data readily available. And so things that you know, previously districts may, or regions may have to spend lots of monies producing has been produced for them, and I'm sure the districts will be very, very excited that the Chartered Institute of Markets in Ghana has done that. Would love to, in, I mean, acknowledge the presence of some dignitaries who have joined us this evening. Um, when I mention, let me just wave so we know that you're here with us. We'll start with Ambassador Hannah Amanyakun, who is coordinating director, political and economic, representing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Tamaklu represents the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. Thank you very much, Dr. Tamaklu. Uh, Mr. Theodosai is National Vice President of CIMG. Thank you very much for joining us. We also have Ms. Ama Amwa El Saboth, who is Council Member CIMG. If you're here, just give us a wave. Thank you very much. And Mr. Isaac Juma, who is Founder and Executive Director of the Bureau of Market and Social Research. Just give us a wave if you're here. Yes, I know you'll, you'll be doing the presentation shortly. Professor Kwekwe Piedu at the Office of the Vice President is also here. Thank you very much, Prof, for joining us. Uh, Francis Dazi, Executive Director of the Association of the Advertising Association Ghana, also here. Give us a wave. All right, thank you very much for joining us, all of you. So we just get a bit of a brief message from Ambassador Hannah Amanyakun, who's Coordinating Director of Political and Economic, representing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs before we get into the contents of the reports. Let's welcome her with a round of applause. Dr. Winfred Nelson, the chairman for this occasion. Dr. Daniel Cassetti, national president of CIMG. Professor Kweku Apiedu, of the Vice President's Office, representatives of ministries, departments, and agencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you warm greetings from the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Honorable Shirley Ayakobotri. She expresses her appreciation for the invitation extended to her, but unfortunately, she couldn't make it, and she uh, conveys her best wishes to you all, and especially to the president of CIMG and members of the institute. For me, it's an honor to be here this evening, to be among experts in marketing. The report that's to be launched today is a very welcome report. As has already been said, it provides important data for users as to the strengths of the various districts and regions, their potentials in tourism and in other sectors of our economy. <coughs> Since its inception, the CIMG has been the voice of marketing in the Ghana and has dedicated itself to train and also to support government in its policies. It has sought to deepen the interest of the marketing profession and to ensure excellency in marketing practice in corporate Ghana and the world at large. The passage of the Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana Act 2020, Act 1021, has given added impetus to the Institute's raison d'etre, in the sense that it goes beyond 
just training and um, setting the agenda for the practice of marketing, but it's promoting the role and value of marketing as a critical tool for business development. In addition, it's advocating for responsible and ethical marketing practices for marketers and businesses in general. Mr. Chair, one of Gardner's cardinal foreign policy objectives is the promotion and protection of the interests of Ghana abroad. In furtherance of this objective, Ghana missions abroad, the diplomatic missions abroad, promote Ghanaian products. We promote Ghana as a preferred investment destination. We promote Ghana as a preferred tourism destination. We look for markets for, for Ghanaian products. And in so doing, we engage most of the time with the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, the Chamber of Commerce, the Ministry of Tourism, and other institutions. We are happy that with this study, we will have a source of reference to use in our work. Indeed, more often, many people, including Ghanaian diplomats, are a bit unaware of the potentials that the various regions have. And to think that we have six more regions, there's the need to be able to know what each region has to offer. So we very much welcome this um, initiative of yours. With the entry into force of the African Continental Free Trade Area, the establishment of the Secretariat in Ghana and the commencement of trade, the role of CIMG in AFTES activities becomes even more imperative because there will be the need to vigorously market products in Ghana which would make, which, which, will be, which can be exported to other African countries, particularly since the objective of the African continental free, de, free trade area is to enhance intra-Africa trade. With the plethora of products we have in Ghana, CIMG will play a very important role in devising strategies for the packaging and marketing of these products. So the Minister of Foreign Affairs very much welcomes this report. And on behalf of the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, I would like to assure you of the support of the Ministry to work with you in promoting the survey on the Regional Brand Index report abroad and here in Ghana. And we'd also like to assure you that our doors are always open to work with you in that regard. So congratulations once again, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Ambassador Hannah Manyaku, who is Coordinating Director, Political and Economic, representing the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. Thank you for welcoming this report and pledging to support its distribution even across the globe. We would now invite Professor Kwekwa Piodu, who is at the office of the Vice President, for some brief remarks. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, very good to see many of you whom I haven't seen for a very long time, including my very good friend, Isaac. Yes. Uh, congratulations to you all, CIMG, and the team that put together this research. I had the opportunity to see the findings for the first time on Friday of last week at very short notice, very impressed. And looking forward to collaborating with you in diverse ways. So you would know by now that where I work or where I come from, which is the presidency, we are very much into digitalization. They say that data is the new oil and if you look at market capitalization amongst the top performing companies across the world, 
you would realize that the leading companies are now all in the area of digital transformation. So your Apples and your Googles and your Microsofts and all that, which occupy the top 10 companies in the world by market capitalization are all digital. If you take the same search into 20 years ago, it was the financial services and the oil companies or the energy and oil and gas companies that were in the top 10. So digitalization is here to stay and data and the use of data, appropriate mining of data for various purposes would be the way forward. I don't see that changing in the foreseeable future. So in Ghana's efforts to become digital, data, research findings, and the ability for us to use the data effectively for decision making would be the name of the game. And for NDPC, for example, in resource allocation, Ministry of Finance, and resource allocation, budgeting, and, and ensuring that across Ghana, all the regions receive their appropriate lots to be able to develop their regions or their communities, data will play a critical role. And we have also talked a bit about investment attraction, tourism, very, very important. I remember during the time of Jake Obichibi Lamte, the late Jake Obichibi Lamte, his main focus was to make tourism the second foreign exchange earner in Ghana's economy. I believe that that's still doable. You look around, the Eastern African countries tend to be ruling Africa in the area of tourism. But Ghana, we have so much, so much. And I, when we had the engagement on Friday, I did say, the interesting thing about the leisure, hospitality, and tourism industry, we really rests on marketing is that there are so many subsectors in there that if we do our work very well right from the time people start booking through airlines getting into hotels traveling into a country receiving security changing money going to tourist destinations and all that the ability for them to make the best decisions will be based on data so, Isaac and team, Kwabna, and my own good friend Daniel, and Teddy, and, and the council as a whole, we appreciate what you've done. And I think our colleagues from Foreign Affairs, NDPC, I work closely with the NDPC as well, because we are into the data you know, field. We've all said it, that we are prepared to work together collaborate with you and to see Ghana move from strength to strength. And so once again, we're glad that this day has come and we pray that the occasion will end on a high note. So thank you very much for having me here. We'll continue to support you. and will continue to work together. Thanks once again. Thank you very, very much, uh, Professor Kwekwe Piru from the Office of the Vice President. Of course, we're glad that this day has come, and we're equally glad that the time has come for the presentation of the report. Let's welcome the Founder and Executive Director of the Bureau of Market and Social Research, Isaac Juma, to give us the report of the Regional Brand Index. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Hello. Hello. pointer good evening sorry good to go sorry I can't see good All right, good evening once again, and thank you very much for coming. My name is Isaac Juma. 
I led the research on the Ghana Regional Brand Index, and I'm happy to present the results to you. We, I see quite a number of stakeholders uh, gathered in here. So I'm going to do this in three steps. I'm going to do this in three steps. First step, I'm going to lay on a little bit of the concept, how we, we played the research from concept right down to the questionnaire that we sent to the respondents. And then two, I'll do the findings, which is the meat of the presentation, of course. And here, because of the stakeholders that we have, I will be doing the linkages between the findings and the strategic imperatives for our stakeholders. And then lastly, but not the least, we need to be able to take the conversation forward after this um, launch. And to wrap it up, I'll look at the uh, conclusions and the strategic things that we need to look at going forward. All right. So the previous speakers have given quite a bit of context and rationale behind the study, so I'm not going to labor, belabor the point. I'm going to move on straight to the objectives that we had going into the research. We had four objectives, indeed, actually three objectives. One was that we, we should be, at the end of the study, be able to gauge the level of spontaneous awareness of the regions the visits, the actual visits to those regions, the visit intent, the migration intent, and then the investment intent towards those regions. Now, we all know that within the past um, a couple of years, yes, we have had uh, six new regions created. For these six new regions, it's important for us to use this particular research as the baseline for marketing planning for the regions. So, for example, if for a new region like Savannah, uh, current spontaneous awareness is 20%. We want to see in the next round of research, in the next two years, in the next three years, an increase in the spontaneous awareness. If visits, percentage of the target market that we are looking at is 20%, we want to see a situation where in the next round of research, in two years, three, um, three years, the uh, percentages move up, okay? Then also, we want to get a sense of the distinctiveness of the regions. So of the nine parameters that the president talked about, we gauged or we got the scores from the respondents and we are now able to show the distinctiveness across the 16 regions based on the findings. Then lastly, but not the least, and I think that one of the spe previous speakers mentioned it, for the purposes of marketing communications, we also want to have a sense of the imagery. If we take a, a new region like Savannah, we take a new region like OT, what is the brand image that comes to mind when the name comes up? What are the attributes that people as associate with the region when the brand name comes up? So these are the objectives that guided the research. Now we move on to the conceptualization, how we conceptualize the research and then operationalize it. Now, so when we talk about destination brands and destination marketing, there are three things that really matter. Life, the life in the region, the work or the business climate and the leisure or the memories or the experiences that people have in these regions. These are the three anchors of what a destination brand is. Now, the technical committee that was formed to guide the process then said, how do we break down these three anchors or these three pillars into parameters that we can go to the field with? And here, we came up with these nine. Local people, the local people, local governance, local culture and heritage, local tourism assets, 
peace and security, the natural environment, of course, distinguished from the built environment and infrastructure, and then the investment climate, and of course, most importantly, the local economic climate. Now, to bring rigor to the study, we then said that we're going to have five cohorts, five groups of people within each region that will do the evaluation. Okay? So the distinction is made between the indigents and then the non-indigents. Now, for the non-indigent group, we had um, students, full-time students, who had come into the region, visitors, tourists, even coming for funerals. We had investors or business owners who are non-indigenous but had come to the region to set up businesses. And lastly, we had the people who had come to work in the regions as employees. So the idea is that if we get the scores from these five groups, then we get a holistic assessment of the brand performance of the region. Obviously, if you had restricted it to people who are indigenous, then it means that they would be biased, isn't it? Exactly. So that is why we had these five cohorts. And what is the case is that for those who will be able to procure the, the, the final data set, you actually have the opportunity to drill down you know, the scores for each of these five groups. If you are a business owner and you want to go to OT, you know, I like, I like using OT, forgive me. <laughs> if you like to go to OT to set up a business, yes, you have the opportunity to drill down on the scores that are given by the business owners or investors in that region, and so on and so forth. All right, so beyond all these um, operationalization that we did, of course, there are other things that we are, we are looking at as well. I mentioned that earlier in the objectives. The awareness, the attention being generated by the regions. The choice, the choice that is for people who are not there in the region at the moment. And then the reputation of the region brand. Okay? So this then gives us a very full appraisal of the marketing potential or of the potential of the region. All right. In terms of methodology, uh, we have quite a bit of a write-up in the reports. I will not bore you with the uh, statistical details and all that. Bottom line is that we had as many as 3,200 respondents, 200 in each region. And the five cohorts in each region were 40, making up the 200. And the um, administration was um, administered, the interviewer administered to the respondents. But a, a very important point. You see, when you're doing branding, there's a lot of perceptions and attitudes and all that. So sometimes the measurements can be a little bit funny. And that is why we set up the nine-member technical committee. So what we know as validity issues in research, forgive me if it's a, it's a, it's a complex word, but in terms of whether a word means the same to um, the respondents and all that, the nine-member technical committee you know, um, um, sort of helped with the, the phrasing of the questionnaire and then the actual measures and ensured that we had what we call phase validity, strong phase validity in the research. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I move to the findings, and then I'll let the slide sink in for a few seconds before I talk about it. Any surprises? <laughs> right. So 16 regions, we have four quartiles. Ashanti region emerges first. Greater Accra second. And Eastern third. Central fourth in the first quartile of the rankings. 
Then in the second quartile of the ranking, northern region comes fifth, western region comes sixth, then, then Volta seventh, Volta upper seventh, east eighth. Upper east eighth. In the third quartile, in the third quartile, we have Bono East we have ninth, Bono East ninth, Bono tenth, Upper West eleventh, Western North twelfth, and in the last quartile, OT, my favorite OT, 13th, Northeast 14th, and Savannah 15th, and Ahafo 16th. There's something that jumps out straight at you when you see this data. And it sort of validates a hypothesis that we went into the, re the research with, which is that if there hasn't been a systematic a strategic approach to marketing of the regions as destination brands, then their performance as brands would only reflect their share of population. If indeed there had been attempts at deliberate marketing of the regions and creative marketing of the regions as destination brands, then what we will see is that some of the smaller regions and newer regions would upstage the older ones or the bigger ones. Classical example is what we've done with Ghana, with the year of the return. Ghana is not the largest country in West Africa, but currently Ghana is the top destination in West Africa, ahead of Nigeria, which is fifth, despite its population and despite. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the thrust of what we want to get across this evening. That once we begin that process of deliberate marketing of the regions and the deliberate branding, we would, in subsequent rounds of this study, two years, three years from now, see instances where my favorite OT will move from 13th to probably 8th. In fact, I can be ambitious and say it cannot go all the way up to uh, Fourth, depending on the creativity of the marketers at the region. So that is one clear thing that is coming out from the study that at this point in time, there doesn't seem to be that branding going on. Now, when you look at the scores across the nine parameters that I talked about, we, have, we see very interesting things. For Ashanti, that comes first. Let me just select a few, you know. For Ashanti that comes first, you realize that it's doing quite well on culture and heritage. Is, it, is that surprising? Then it is doing quite well on local tourism assets, but not so well on local economic climates. So from a marketing planning perspective, this is where we begin the work. Looking at the strengths, looking at the weaknesses, looking at the opportunities and the threats, and beginning to strategize from there. Greater Accra. Now, that is where, between the two of them, that is where there was a little bit of upstaging, because actually, as per the last census, Greater Accra has now become the most populated region. So based on the weighted index, it should have actually come up on top. And the fact that it's also done quite well on a number of things. But Ashanti upstages greater Accra. However, at second position, we also see that um, greater Accra also does quite well on culture and heritage, uh, does well on local people, um, and then the investment climate, which is not too surprising. When we come down, um, Ahafo, oh, Ahafo, Savannah, and the four new regions at the bottom seem to be struggling on some of the and some of the parameters. But bottom line is that there is a lot of work that needs to be done with the six new regions that have been created. Upper West is 11th and comes behind Bono East and Bono which are two new regions. So that is also something that we need to look at. It means that despite it being uh, an older region, it needs to do more on branding.
So earlier, I mentioned that we did the research and talked to five cohorts, okay? So one of the things that you'll get in the report, the detailed report, is also how the cohorts are ranking the regions, okay? So once again, not too surprising. For business owners, the brand, region brand that comes up strongest is Greater Accra, followed by Ashanti, then Easting, and then Central. When you go to domestic tourists, it changes a little bit, which once again reflects some you know, interest in Central Region as a, as a tourism uh, destination. So um, Central Region upstages Eastern Region when it comes to domestic tourists. And instead, Eastern is fourth. Ashanti, first. For full-time students, non-indigents, we have Ashanti coming up, tops, Greater Accra two, Eastern three, Central four. Full-time workers, where people would like to go uh, or stay to work as employees. Here, Greater Accra first, and then Ashanti second. Similarly, places where people want to stay, the indigenous want to stay. Greater Accra first, Ashanti second, and Eastern third, Central fourth. So now we get into the, the measurements proper, okay? So one of the parameters was local people. And for local people, the actual questions, the actual measures were the people are hospitable, the people are kind, they show togetherness, they are trustworthy, com there's communication in different languages, they are hardworking, they are honest, and they are tolerant. And here we see interesting data as well. One of the hypotheses that we went into the research with is that Although cosmopolitanism has its good sides, sometimes a region loses its character in the process. So in terms of marketing, how do we sell the strengths of a cosmopolitan region and at the same time come up with ways to sort of, you know, make up for its weaknesses in the process? So greater Accra, the red bit is the, like the lowest across and the green bit is the highest uh, across. So as you can see, Greater Accra in a nominal sense, not in a weighted sense, but in a nominal sense, seems to lag behind all the other regions on the measures for local people. Okay? Contrary, Savannah. And not just Savannah, but some of the regions in the north, we see them doing well on the measures for local people, okay? So there's a need to look at how, you know, cosmopolitanism um, can be um, exploited and at the same time, how we look at the weaknesses that come with it. And for regions that are more homogeneous, how do we leverage on that strength? But when we put it all together and then we do the weighted index, then Ashanti comes up tops and Ahafu um, trails the 15 other regions. Now we move on to culture and heritage, which is very much linked to the life and then also linked to tourism. So here too, we see the, in fact, the measures are that the places, the, the region has places of historic relevance, um, has festivals of historic relevance, has traditional meal variety, has variety of popular national foods available, has accessible eateries that sell continental foods, and uh, it preserves culture, its culture and heritage. Okay, Greater Accra, not too surprisingly, uh, that's well on accessible eateries, 
that sell continental foods. But then we have Savannah doing better on the variety of popular national foods uh, in the region, available in the region, as well as traditional meal variety. You know, so once again, we are seeing some very good scores for Savannah. This is the second slide, and we're seeing very good scores for Savannah. Uh, Northern region, strong on preservation of culture and heritage. When we bring it all together and we do the weighted index, however, Greater Accra comes up tops, a half full trails. The local governance, very important. So here we're looking at satisfactory performance of the local government. The uh, traditional leadership is respected. Environmental beautification by the local government. Local government programs boost standard of living and land acquisition is easy. Greater Accra trails on respected traditional leadership Savannah, Savannah uh, comes up tops, 93% on that. Um, very interesting measure, environmental beautification by the local government. For some reason, Ashanti trails, and then Savannah uh, leads, and so on and so forth. When you do the composite, when you do the weighted index, Greater Accra, however, comes up tops, and a half full lags. And this is also one of the important measures, the local tourism assets. Um, of course, as we try to drive uh, domestic tourism, that is one of the things that we really need to look at, Mr. Chairman. So here, the measures, the specific questions to the respondents were, you know, the, the, has, the region has a lot of attractions has practices, beliefs of interest, celebrations and events of interest, sports and games of interest, funeral rides that attract visitors. We intentionally, the, the committee put this in because of the, you know, the talk about funeral tourism and, and how we can, it's, it's a bit uh, macabre, if I can use that word, but yes, if it brings money, why not? You know, so yes, there are a lot of ideas being put up about with respect to tourism. You know, funeral tourism is one, sports tourism is another, medical tourism is another, and so on and so forth. So we tested all these things, and we have data that will guide um, how we see the regions with respect to these things. So patronage of orthodox medicine, patronage of traditional medicine. You know, we normally we look at domestic uh, market for this, but uh, there's evidence to show that it's even something that attracts um, visits from the sub-region. So that's also interesting data to look at. Um, accessible quality lodgings and accessible, affordable um, hotels or lodgings. So Central, true to form, um, is doing well on some of these measures. A lot of attractions, uh, not too surprising, practices, beliefs of interest, celebrations and events of interest, and all that. Greater Accra, sports and games of interest. Then Easton snatches um, funeral rites uh, that attracts visitors. It snatches it from uh, Ashanti Ridge, isn't it? <laughs> so 89% for Easton and then Ashanti. But then again, the two are cut from the same cloth, isn't it? <laughs> right, Savannah. Um, on that particular um, uh, measure, Sabana is the one that trails. It means that a lot of people are not probably, you know, do not think about going for funerals as in the Sabana region. Um, maybe we need to look at that. Uh, Northeast, uh, that's well on patronage of orthodox medicine. Uh, a half full trails on that, and so on and so forth. But when we put it all together and we do the weighted index, uh, Greater Accra comes up tops, and then a half full um, lats. Eastern security. 
that feeds into both life and it feeds into even the experiences. If a tourist goes to a place and experiences crime, that right there is a problem. You know, so peace and security actually runs through for the three um, uh, pillars or anchors that we talked about earlier, life, um, experiences, and then work. And here we looked at safe place to raise a family, respect for law and order, low ethnic tensions, and low crime rates. Okay? Greater Accra lags on low crime rates. Eastin does well on respect for law and order and low ethnic tensions. Um, Upper East um, lags a little bit on low ethnic tensions. Bono lags on safe place to raise a family. But Savannah is touted by the people there as a safe place to raise a family. When you put it all together, do the weighted index, Ashanti comes up tops on this, and um, Ahafu trails. Then investment climate, very important for the bit where we try to drive you know, businesses to go to different places. In fact, we make that strong argument as a, a predicate to or, or rationale for this index, regional brand index, that it is so important that as we build brand Ghana, as we build the brand Ghana, we have to build the 16 destinations to the extent that in particular, investments and monies move to those regions equitably. So that is why this measure is very important. And the, the specific things that we looked at under the investment climate where has many investment opportunities, a structured support system for businesses, generally easy to set up businesses, has affordable labor, good infrastructure for businesses, has raw materials for local manufacturers. Local people have good work ethic. That's very important. All right, so let's look at it. Central, for some reason, trails on, on quite a bit. You know, has many investment opportunities, it trails. Has structured support system for local businesses, it trails. Uh, generally easy to set up businesses. Has affordable lab labor, it trails. So this is clearly something that the region will need to look at. Remember, for the purposes of branding, we're looking at perceptions and attitudes. It may not matter if what, or the, what is on the ground doesn't ma match the perceptions. We are interested in the perceptions and attitudes and how to change them, how to make them positive. For the purposes of drawing migration, drawing in migration, drawing in um, tourism, drawing in investment. So this is something that we need to look at. Um, Northern region does well on easy to set up business, has affordable labor, good infrastructure for businesses. Western does well on raw materials for local manufacturers. Uh, greater crowd trails on that. Savannah does well on local people have good work ethic. When you bring it all together, um, Greater Accra comes up tops, a half full trails. Then the natural environment, which of course drives um, tourism. The measures were, has beautiful landscaping, has beautiful scenery, has good stock of wildlife, preserved natural environment. Okay, so this, this is also the instance where, you know, when we compare this to what is actual and we see a gap, then that is really um, where we need to do a lot of work as marketing people um, uh, to close the gap and make sure that, you know, the perceptions and attitudes reflect what is on the ground because when you look at the data, you can see that there are some regions that should ordinarily perform well on some of the parameters, but the perceptions and the attitudes 
are not necessarily positive, or the awareness uh, that precedes the perceptions and attitudes are not there. All right. So here, for beautiful landscaping, beautiful scenery, Easton takes, takes it. A half a trails on beautiful scenery, good stock of wildlife, and uh, preserved natural environment. Uh, Northeast does very well on preserved natural environment. When we put it all together, uh, as a weighted index or rated ranking, Greater Accra comes up tops, though, and a half full uh, trails. So depending on what you want to do with the data, you may decide to look at just the nominal um, scores that, that are coming for the region and just use them as a baseline okay, to do your marketing. And then in, in subsequent waves, the idea would be to take the percentages up. Because yes, in some ways, you can't compare some of the very small regions to the big regions. Now, built environment and infrastructure. This is where the uh, work in the, in the region is deliberate. You know, the built environment and the infrastructure. So this is also a very important measure. But here we looked at a couple of things. Clean cities and towns, well-planned cities and towns, available recreational facilities. Cities and towns are easy to navigate low vehicular traffic, quality educational institutions, quality healthcare facilities, basic utilities are accessible, basic, uh, sorry, good road network, and the region has modern sports facilities. So one of the things that for me comes out very clearly is that the people who did this, uh, the respondents in the northern region, for example, seem to have a certain overall satisfaction with the experience in the region, certain contentment that influences how um, you know, they score everything else. You know? and, and it also influences the perceptions on specific things with respect to the region. So here you can see that northern region, for example, comes up strongly on um, the perceptions around low vehicular traffic, uh, cities and towns are easy to navigate, quality educational institutions, quality healthcare facilities, basic utilities that are accessible, and so on and so forth. Accra, on the other hand, trails on quality educational institutions. That is a shocker. That right there is a shocker. You know, so... In terms of perceptions, in terms of attitudes, there's work to be done. Has modern sports facilities that could be as a result of expectation gap. If the region has the sports facilities, has the sports stadium and whatever, people go there and the things are broken down and not maintained properly, there is a greater dissatisfaction as opposed to a region that doesn't expect to have a, a nice stadium, has gotten, but has gotten that nice stadium. They are happy. So that is also one, one way to look at some of the results, that in some places, people will have greater expectation of the region because of you know, a number of things. Ghana, uh, Accra, obviously, is the capital um, um, city. So people would have capital, um, you know, the region that hosts the capital city. So people will have greater expectations. All right, a half foot trails on quite a bit. Uh, Easting, good perception around sports facilities. And then when we put it all together, uh, Greater Accra, however, as, as a weighted index, with Greater Accra comes up tops, a half full trails. Lastly, the local economic climates. Very important. At the end of the day, it's all bread and butter, isn't it? Yes. So here we looked at specific measures, affordable food, affordable accommodation, available rented accommodation, affordable commercial transport, opportunities for employment, and the low cost of living. Greater Accra 
um, lags on affordable accommodation, lags on commercial, affordable commercial transport, and lags on low cost of living. Uh, Savannah, uh, however, upstages all the other 15 and comes up tops on affordable food, affordable accommodation, available rented accommodation. Northern region does well on affordable commercial transport. I mean, this is a, there's some of the regions where, for example, you have a lot of bicycles, isn't it? And, uh, you know, so, say that again. Ah, there you go. You know, and it feeds into a lot of things, perceptions about a lot of things. So, yes. When you bring it all together, um, and you do the weighted ranking, Ashanti comes up tops on this one, uh, and uh, I have four trails. Right. So those were the nine big parameters that we did the uh, performance and the index on. Now we are moving to other data that we collected. I'll let this sink in for a few seconds, and then I will, I will deal with it. All right, so very interesting findings coming up for awareness of and versus two other regions, okay? So we asked the respondents, aside the region that you currently reside in, which of the following regions are you aware of? You mentioned three other regions spontaneously without being assisted, okay? And this was really our way of getting to see the work being done around the six new regions, okay? And when we ask this question, of course, not too surprisingly, Greater Accra uh, comes up tops, Ashanti comes up tops, uh, but Northern, who's a stand here, comes up as third in terms of people mentioning the region spontaneously, okay? Um, now let's look at the 16, uh, sorry, the six new regions. Unfortunately, they trail. OT is 15th. My favorite OT is 15th. Savannah is 14th. Um, Western North, 16th. Um, Bono East, 12. And basically, they trail. So there's some work to be done in terms of bringing those regions to top of mind for people. All right. Then we also asked, the, of the regions that they are aware of, which of them have they ever visited? Very, very important data. This is something you cannot get from government statistics. Very important data. So which have they visited? And here, well, once again, not too surprisingly, the, the big boys uh, come up Greater Accra, Ashanti, um, but nothing who's a stand here as well. Uh, fourth is Central, and then fifth is Eastin. The six new regions trail. But, you know, bottom line is that they trail, and we need to do some work on that. Now, and in fact, this is probably, you know, something that may have also fed into the responses and all that. If somebody goes to just the urban region, sorry, the urban cities, the person will have a view of the region, isn't it? If the person goes to the rural locations, that person would also have a view, a different view of the region. If the person has been to both, the person's view of the, the, the region would also be different. So from a marketing perspective and a destination branding perspective, one of the things that we need to do is to get the people to have 
an experience that spans both the urban and the rural. If you go to the rural, you get to see the natural environment. You get to see the, 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 the beauty. Actually, you actually get to see the beauty of the region because some of the uh, uh, rural locations are pristine. You know, you have pristine nature, and you get to appreciate the region from that perspective. Of course, the urban um, loca localities would also come with their own appeal. But bottom line is that from a destination marketing point of view, we need to drive that total experience so that whoever um, is our target market has a more holistic appraisal of that um, region. Okay, so here too, we have the data. You know, um, Greater Accra um, and Western getting very high percentages for the, the visits to their urban localities. Um, then in terms of rural localities, we have uh, OT coming up quite strongly. Easting as well, Ahafo, and so on and so forth. All right. But what is instructive here is that, yes, we are, quite, we are having quite a good number of the respondents, our target market for for you know, destination marketing, saying that they have been to a mix of urban and rural localities, which means that also the appraisal and the scores that you have given us is from that perspective. You know, if you look at the green, where we have the green, the we have, in all cases, more than half of the target market saying that they have been to both rural and urban localities. We were mindful that um, because we went to the field with specific parameters and all that, something may have escaped us. So that is why we also had a measure for overall satisfaction. So that if some, there was something that we did not capture, but still feeds into this overall satisfaction of the respondents for their stay in the region, then that would come up, okay? And for those of us who do marketing, we make a distinction between just being satisfied and going to the next step where now you are actively pulling people along. Come, come, come to this region. Come to this region. It's, it's a beautiful region. You know, and that is what we call the brand advocacy. But usually, from a marketing perspective, the region would have to do a lot more storytelling, a lot more engagement to be able to push people who are satisfied to tell other people to come to those regions. That, that is what we do on the marketing side. We try to do engagement so that people who are satisfied will then pull other people to the brand. And that is exactly what we need to do. Uh, moving on from this uh, first round of the research, this is what we need to do. If there are discrepancies, or not discrepancies, but gaps between the satisfaction and the advocacy. It means that the region is not doing as much to engage the people in there, so much that they would want to promote the region to other people. But remember, and as we always say in advertising, word of mouth is always the, the strongest thing to do. You can put out a lot of adverts and all that, but if uh, a family friend, uh, a family member or a friend you know, tells me to come to the region, I'm more likely to do it than um, when I see an advert. So here, Northern comes up top on overall satisfaction. Um, Buno East, and here we are just looking at the, the, um, the scores from the region, the nominal scores from the region. We are, not, we are not indexing it or anything because satisfaction is satisfaction. We just focused on that. Um, then, uh, then Savannah comes up third, and Northeast is fourth. Greater Accra, Greater Accra needs to do some work, isn't it? <laughs> but once again, that is where you know. In my roundup, I'm going to look at you know. 
we need to do more research. This is going to be the baseline for us to do more research. This issue of cosmopolitanism and its strengths and weaknesses, we, somebody needs to take it up to that next level where we begin to look at how we can harness it from a marketing perspective. You know, so as you can see, uh, Greater Accra um, trailing at 15th, uh, Central also trailing at um, uh, 16th. When, when you bring it down to advocacy, it doesn't change much. But Savannah, which is third on satisfaction, jumps up to first on advocacy. And then Northern rather drops. It means that it needs to do more. All right. I was very happy when the previous speaker talked about you know, the, the issue of imagery and how we need to use it in mar the marketing communications at the NDPC and all that. You know, the data that we have in the reports actually provides the basis to do that. You know? So we take the regions, then using standard attributes, branding attributes. Let me go through them quickly, very quickly as I round up uh, in two minutes. Sincere, the region is sincere. The region is excited. The region is competent. The region is sophisticated. The region is adventurous. The region is strong. The region is innovative. The region is progressive, tolerant, rich. We had a, a little bit of description in the questionnaire for the respondents, you know, but obviously, uh, because all of them are literate, uh, that wasn't a problem. Now, when you look at the table, we have some very interesting results. Once again, there's something going on in Savannah that I, I guess in the next round of research, we really need to go and, and check on because very, very good scores coming from there. Um, sincere, the region wins on sincere on a nominal level. It wins on sincere, competent, strong, and tolerant. Our good old Accra uh, trails on sincere. It trails on competent. That's, that was a shocker for me. Um, it trails on tolerant, but it does well on adventurous. Once again, it reflects the cosmopolitan argument that I talked about earlier. Central, unfortunately, trails on a number of things. Bottom line for me is that there seems to be quite a bit of work we need to do on Central, you know, looking at the data. Um, it trails on strong, it trails on innovative, it trails on progressive, and it trails on rich. Eastern leads on exciting. I don't want to believe, you know, we did the study before uh, Kwewu or Kwewu. <laughs> so there must be some other reason, but, you know, uh, Eastin uh, comes up tops on exciting, I have foot trails on that. Um, Volta, no, let me see, Northern trails on, uh, Northern leads on sophisticated, Northeast, uh, that's well as well, you know, very interesting. Um, Northeast also does well on innovative. Northern does well on progressive. And um, Western pulls a shocker for, oh no, it doesn't pull a shocker. Uh, it's rich. Rich is something that um, we would ordinarily, you know, all right. Is there anything, anything on here that is surprising? Right. So that right there is the imagery that we got for um, the regions. And as we've mentioned a couple of times, it would be useful for the purposes of marketing communications, the, the documentaries and the brochures and all that. We need to harness um, this data so that when you put it out there, it actually resonates with the people. All right. So I want to round up 
And in rounding up, the question is how or in which ways do we build on from here? For us, the Charter Institute of Marketing, our motto is working for Ghana. Myself, as a member of the Institute, I'm extremely excited about this project that we've done and, and the possible benefits that would accrue to the various stakeholders that we are targeting with the report. Um, we are saying that there are six things that we can do moving on from here and taking the conversations forward after this launch. One is coming back to the Brand Ghana strategic planning. This data will be very useful. So the 16 destination brands now become the foundation for building the Brand Ghana agenda. Then regional development and branding is also a strategic imperative we need to carry forward. Investment promotion, general tourism development, educational tourism. I talked extensively about that. And then destination marketing research. Throughout the research, I hinted at you know, the areas where we can do more. We can you know, collect more information and try to unravel the, the knots uh, in terms of what we know about the regions. And in the reports, we've highlighted the stakeholders that we want to work with in looking at these strategic imperatives. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for staying with me for uh, or throughout the presentation. I'm happy to pass it back on to the MC. Oh, we can definitely do better. Let's give him another round of applause. You know, the first shock I had was when I saw the overall ranking. Even with my poor eyesight, I still could see my region. Placed Sith. That's the Western region, right? Western region Sith. Oh, I have checked. I have checked. <laughs> I have checked. You know, uh, we had always had the conversation. You know, you say, oh, maybe Greater Krashante could fight. But whichever one places second, Western region will place third. And so I was waiting to see that we are third. We are never third. Maybe because of the split, Western and Western North. But that notwithstanding, we'd have this conversation. Um, it's very important that at least we have something to build on. We have something to pick and say, these are what people are saying. This is the data that we need. And so it's no longer us saying, oh, I think, I think, I think. Now we have data to support a lot of the discussions. The discussions would continue. I'm, I'm told that we've just been taking off uh, Joy News Channel. Uh, originally, we were supposed to have gone off at 7 p.m., but the team decided that it would give us more time until the presentation is over. And that's only indicative of the fact that this is a good presentation and one that all of us are interested in. So having shared the contents with us, it's important to officially launch the Regional Brand Index report. That's the Ghana Regional Brand Index. And to help us do that, I'd call the following persons. Of course, the chairman would come upstage here, join us. Uh, Dr. Winfred Nelson would also be joined by the national president of the Chartered Institute of Market in Ghana, Dr. Daniel Kasati. Now, Dr. Kwekwa Piedu from the office of the vice president would also be joining us for the official launch, as well as Ambassador Hannah Amanyako from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, and then Dr. Jeffrey Tamaklu. If you're already Let's come up here. And Professor Kwekwepidi will just say something briefly to signal the official launch of the Ghana mm. Regional Brand Index. Once again, huge congratulations to the Chartered Institute of Marketing and the team that put together this concept. And we are all witnesses here this evening. 
at this juncture, it is my singular honor to declare the CIMG Regional Brand Index duly launched. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very, very much, Professor, and the rest of you all uh, for officially launching this. Now, the first person I looked at was the national president. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure for those of you who've been with us previously, you can understand. Doc, should I say it? <laughs> well, I have been told not to say it. I mean, who knows if I say it? But I, we will let it go. Um, but I was looking. I was looking at him. If, if I see it, I feel shy. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on, and we'll call on the national vice president of CIMG to give us the vote of thanks. Let's welcome him. Mr. Chairman. Our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the, we are getting to the end of the program. I think you all agree with me that it's been a very special program. Um, this is something that has taken months uh, of hard work. And uh, we are grateful to the good Lord that finally we are getting to the point where we have launched it and it will be made available to all of us and all invited guests. I have been invited here to give the vote of thanks. Mr. Chairman, our first thanks goes to you. We thank you very much for your time, the input, and all the feedback that you've given. I can assure you that we are going to really take note of everything that you have said same goes to all our invited guests. I would not be able to mention all the names, but I think you have all been properly acknowledged. Again, we thank you for the input and the feedback. In the course of all this, we also had a stakeholder engagement with some of the government ministries, departments, and agencies. I'll quickly mention some of them. We had the NDPC. We had the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. We had the Ministry of Local Government and Decent Decentralization and Rural Development. We had the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, and Culture, the GIPC, the Ghana Tourism Authority. I must say that we found all these engagements very fruitful, especially the one with the NDPC, because it was an engagement that we picked up a lot of notes. And I think that we are going to make use of everything that, that you gave. I would also like to express gratitude to the Bureau of Market and Social Research, who are our partners. They have been very supportive, and I think their leader, Isaac Guma, Isaac Juma, forgive me, I always say Isaac Guma because I have one in my office called Isaac Guma, but Isaac Juma, yes, um, I think you've been very supportive, very professional in all that you've done. Again, I would also like to express gratitude to the CEO of the Chartered Institute of Marketing and his hardworking team. They have been, they've worked very hard, and I think we express gratitude to them as well. And finally, as well to the, all the members of the CIMG Regional Brand Index Technical Committee, of which I chair. 
I think the committee has also been very helpful, very supportive. We thank all of you. We thank the media houses that we have here, and um, we are grateful for all the support. Everybody who has come here came for a reason, and we appreciate your presence. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Osai. We we'll now invite Mr. Francis Dazi once again to give us the closing prayer. Yes, so we, we started with you, we we'll end with you. Also for Dazi. Sorry, pray. Father, we thank you for the fact that we started with you and you are seen as true. What shall we say? We are grateful. Our prayer is that this research will move our country forward. New concepts, new ideas, and new areas of development. But thank you and bless you. Take us back safely as we go back home. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now that you have given yourself a suffodazi, the next time you send me a message, I would acknowledge that I was off a dazzy. Anyway, thank you very much. So, folks, I've told us um, a cocktail, uh, you know, once we get out of the hall. Please get something. It's a bit late. We know many of you have decided not to eat after 6 p.m., but just do that, uh, you know, because of uh, CIMG. Thank you very much. The discussions, of course, would continue. My name is Winston Amor. Have a lovely evening.